If not for anything else, do it out of love. Do it out of love for your family. Do it out of love for your wife. Do it out of love for the relations between the two of you. Do it for the sake of, for the sake of faithfulness, uh, to observe for faithfulness there. Because otherwise you are being affected. What do you lose? Welcome to another episode of My Life Experiences. I am Wezi Nyanewa Sosola. If you are new to this channel, this is a platform where we share life experiences with the hope that someone may listen, be inspired, and learn from these experiences. Yes, friends. And in today's episode, it's a continuation of an earlier episode titled Finding Fulfillment in Marriage. And you can catch it on the link provided above. However, in today's episode, I just want to talk about building a happy and healthy marriage by reducing illnesses. Building a happy and healthy marriage by reducing illnesses. You may all agree with me that at one point or the other, we've been indiscriminately affected or infected by an illness, either of ourselves, our spouse, our child, our parent, someone in our circle, basically has ever gotten ill before. And you may agree with me, when an illness, illness comes in a family, it affects all the members of the family. That's what happens. But today, I just want to focus on illnesses that affect the husband and the wife relations. They are not addressed enough in the marriage circles, people are not talking about them. What do you do when your spouse has a prolonged illness? What do you do when your spouse has a recurring illness? How do you handle it? The only thing that we know to do is to advise couples to be faithful to, to one another, to be chaste to one another, to be um, to only have one spouse. But we don't tell them the solution. If one of the spouses has a recurring illness, how do you deal with that? I think there is a gap there. And I would love if we can improve in the marriage circles to address these issues so that we may help uh, each other. Sometimes it's so difficult to raise these types of issues. However, for today, I want to focus on those illnesses that affect specifically the woman. When the man and the woman, they come together, the germs may be passed from one person to the other, and the woman may get some infections in the reproductive tract, such that may come with some burning sensation, may come with some itchiness, may come with some foul smell, and also maybe to the extent of um, uh, developing some problems in the pelvic area, and may also have some cysts developing, some fibros, some tumors, and all those things may develop in the it may develop in the reproductive tract just because of those infections that have been transmitted uh, between the the couple. So, what do you do in that in that case? But it may happen between other couples whereby you do observe high level of cleanliness. The husband, before he uses his tool, he makes sure it's clean. The wife cleans his, his, her undergarments such that it doesn't harbor any germs. And uh, you observe all the highest level of cleanliness, but still these infections are recurring and it's effect, affecting your marriage. And also maybe you are developing these tumors, uh, these uh, fibroids, and you don't know what to do. You don't know what to do. And I just want also to mention one thing. I've read somewhere, I understand that black women are disproportionately affected by tumors and fibroids. I don't know what's the scientific reason for that, but it's black women who are disproportionately affected by fibroids, by tumors. And hey, I'm here and I'm justified to talk about this issue because I'm a black woman. And some of them, as I've said, may come because of uncleanliness, but not all, not all. There could be so many reasons for tumors, for fibroids, some may be genetic, some may be inherited, some may come from maybe the foods that we eat. There could be so many reasons, but cleanliness should not be ruled out. When infections come in because of uh, cleanliness, they may affect the pelvic area, then later on, they may develop into these tumors, these fibroids, these cysts, and so on and so forth. I'm not a medical professional, but from my lay understanding, this is what um, I know, that it may happen to some, only in some um, situations. So, when you have tried all your options, 
you don't know what to do it's affecting your marriage you are not happy you're not healthy what can you do i would advise that you should explore the option of sniping you know if it's still affecting you you've done everything you can please explore the option of sniping you know you snipe off the excess skin from the man's too there was a time when the government of malawi was raising awareness and advocating for the vmmc voluntary sniping for men so they would raise awareness and a lot of men could go into the public facilities and get their uh two uh, excess skin sniped off yeah so that's what was happening and, and a number of men during that time um got the sniping but now i don't know where we are how far we are now let me look at some religious roots of sniping okay when we go to the old testament in the bible it's talking about the covenant that was entered into between abraham and god god invite uh, instructed abraham to get himself and all the men in um in his tribe and even the slaves to get them sniped i mean all the men even starting from infants of eight days old god had instructed to get all of them sniped so even up to now the jews they practice this sniping they snipe all the men and yet they still survive and there are also other religions they practice the same they snipe themselves off and also they they do survive so it's not a strange practice to do it's something that was happening in the uh, olden days and it was very important apart from being the uh, a sign of covenant between god and abraham and his family it is it also ensured the cleanliness you know these men were having multiple wives and the sniping is so important especially when you are also having multiple uh, wives it ensured that maybe they rid themselves of different kinds of uh, illnesses and the sicknesses yeah that's just my assumption however when we get to the new testament we are seeing a new approach here being introduced by paul i can just read from the book of um in the book of galatians they talk much about it um so paul is just talking about uh, that we are justified by faith okay not by law so we are not obliged as new testament um believers we're not obliged to follow these laws of sniping uh because we are justified by faith we live by faith okay uh so he's saying that we should pursue cleanliness of the heart that's what paul is saying we need to pursue cleanliness of the heart for salvation i can also read the book of uh first corinthians 7 uh, verse 19 where it says um sniping is nothing and and sniping is nothing but keeping the commandments of god is what matters so he's saying sniping or and sniping is nothing whether you are sniped or whether you're not sniped it doesn't matter but as long as you are keeping the commandments of god so if you want to see god if you want to have a good relationship with god if you want at the end of life to go where god is you want to do his will sniping doesn't matter it, what matters is the condition of your heart that's what matters um keeping the commandments of god is what matters that's what paul is saying that sniping doesn't matter okay this is spiritual spiritually but when you talk to physically when you talk to physically because we are talking about cleanliness here okay you may say that okay sniping does not bring any salvation i do agree i do agree um i don't dispute that but there's a level of cleanliness that sniping brings with it so if you snipe you remove the excess skin and it's easy for you to clean the two and you can uh, use it uh, safely and yourself and it will significantly reduce the uh, infections to passed around between yourself and the wife and it will dramatically change your lives and you shall bear witness about it if you just go um and get yourself sniped you can try that one of course when you get sniped nothing will change in your life everything will be okay you the two will perform properly uh, you'll be able to have kids you'll be able to 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 reach uh, whatever you want to do but uh, it doesn't affect that um area of your life it will not affect it um at all you'll be able to perform um properly uh 
without any hindrances um, when you get striped. Because some men may be afraid that, okay, it will maybe reduce my performance, it will reduce the way I'm feeling. No, you feel the way you are feeling. You And also, um, you'll be able to have kids. You Whatever you, you want to do with it, you can use the tool um, in whatever you want. Don't be scared that maybe they may cut you the whole thing off and you lose your, your, your tool and your performance. Don't be scared of that. Just go to trusted, reputable um, professionals, especially these days that we've got well-established hospitals. They are following all the procedures uh, properly and uh, they are following all the cleanliness properly when doing the procedures. You are getting medicated and everything. I'm sure when you do it, you are going to have uh, a good experience. You are going to have a good experience. Yeah, yeah. So many people have done this before. It's not um, something that you are you are the only one doing it. Others have done it before, and they are able to perform in their houses. They have got so many children. All these children of Israel that are out there, all the people in the Middle East, you see them there. They have all gotten sniped. So if you are a Christian, you are facing these issues. Don't get afraid. Don't get afraid. If for if not for anything else, if you are afraid, but if not for anything else, do it out of love. Do it out of love for your family. Do it out of love for your wife. Do it out of love for the relations between the two of you. Do it for the sake of, for the sake of faithfulness, uh, to observe for faithfulness there. Because otherwise you are being affected. What do you lose? What do you lose? You already are affected by these uh, illnesses and these infections. So you just do it out of love and everything is going to be okay. Having reached that point, thank you so much. Friends, God desires that we have a wholesome marriage. God desires that we have a happy, healthy marriage. And we thank God because of the gift that he has given us, the gift of marriage. And reaching this point, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all and may it give us good insights now and always. Thank you so much, friends. Stay blessed.